In this video we're going to take a look at uh, tables in Excel and before we actually get into that uh, I have uh, some data here that is an ordinary text file. If you look up here at the file name you see I got this from my Excel samples folder and it's just a plain old text file uh, called advising.txt and since it's an ordinary text file, it has very little formatting. You can't do anything with fonts or colors or margins or anything like that. Basically, the only formatting you can do in a text file is you can hit the Enter key at the end of a line, and you can hit the Tab key on a line to move something over to the next column. And if you've seen a few of these, uh, you realize right away that this is a tab delimited text file because the stuff tries to line up in columns. Now, it doesn't quite work out right because you know, if I have a long name like Washington, instead of seeing his major in this column like it is for most people, um, his major gets pushed over to the next column. So uh, if we had our columns sufficiently wide, and our tab stops basically sufficiently wide, uh, this would appear very nicely in six columns, but it doesn't. Uh, but we do have tabs. If you were to copy this entire page here and paste it into Word, and turn on the viewing of hidden symbols, you would see that there's an actual tab character uh, on every line. There's five of them. One between first and last name, one between last name and major, one here between the major and the advisor, one here between the advisor and the credits, and then one between the credits and the ID number. So uh, the tabs are there. Uh, they're just invisible like they normally are. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to get this into Excel and Excel has made it real easy for you to get data into it if the data is already in a table format or something similar to a table format like a tab delimited file here so uh, let's select all of this you can either drag the mouse over it or you can do a control A to select all of it and then do a control C to copy it to the clipboard and then we're going to flip over to Excel we're going to open up a blank um, Whoops, we're going to open up a blank book or page rather in Excel and we're going to try to paste that in. Now, if I just do an ordinary paste, um, it's ugly. It does not work. Uh, it puts everything you see here is in column A and I've actually got enough for six columns and so I don't want to do that. So let's do an undo here. And it turns out that if you can't do a regular paste, there are some other options and one of them is called Paste Special. And if you select that, uh, it gives you three options and HTML, Unicode text and text are the three options. How do you know which one it is? Well you just try them and see if they work or not. If the HTML doesn't work try this one. If that doesn't work try this one. If that doesn't work then you're gonna have to get a little more creative. I've tried this before. I know that HTML does not work. It just works like we did a minute ago and everything is in column A. But either one of these other two choices will work. So I'm gonna choose Unicode text and click on OK. And uh, there's a little bit of uh, truncating of some of the data here in the columns, but otherwise uh, the data did come in in, in six columns. Now I'm going to make my columns a little bit wider here. Actually, let's just select all of them here and make them kind of like that. Okay, so now I've got more readable data. And this is a table. A table is basically where you have column headings at the top and every row has data that is related and the data in a given column is of the type that's given up here at the top. So this column A is going to be filled with all first names, B is going to be filled with all last names, uh, C will have majors, and so on. Okay. Now in Excel there's an option to make it into an official Excel table and that is on the Home tab and it's in the Styles group right here and it's under Format as Table and when you click on this you get a bunch of choices. Okay. Uh, we've got light formatting, we've got medium formatting, we've got dark formatting and you see that almost all of them except for this first row here and this row it looks like and this row but most of them do something special with the first row to indicate that the first row is really column headings and quite a few of them also have banded rows to make it easier to read as you go across the page so I kinda like the medium here and we'll pick the first option under medium that's called blue table style medium 2 and click on it and if my cursor was in the data here it will figure out the borders of the data if not uh, you will have to go here click on this and reselect 
all of your data. The easy way is just put your cursor in the data before you start. Uh, there's also a checkbox here, and if you're doing a table, uh, your table needs to have column headings at the top. They call them headers here, and you need to make sure that is checked on. Uh, if you don't have column headers, then you're going to have problems doing much useful stuff with the table. So uh, we want this turned on because those are column headings. And then we're going to click on OK. And I get um, my first row is all in bold. And it's white text on a dark blue background. And then I get banded rows all the way down. And I've got these little drop down arrows here. So Excel did all those things for me just by having me tell it that I wanted this to be formatted as a table. Now if I scroll down a ways here, uh, you'll see at the bottom of the table the banding ends and there's also this little arrow here in the lower right hand corner that marks the bottom of the table. And if you want to make another row in your table, just go to that last row and hit the tab key and you see how that little arrow moved down. So now you can start typing some more stuff in here. I'm going to type in, I'm just going to tab over the end of the row. Then I'm going to hit tab again and the arrow moves down again and because we're doing banded rows the next row is blue. So you can easily add rows on. I'm going to click on undo here a couple of times to get back to where I started originally. Okay. Now there are some other options here. Uh, we've got some table style options here and it does have a header row by default. Rows are banded because that's what I selected over here. And uh, let's turn off header row and that stuff goes away. Now I think the data is still... No, it's not there. I thought the data might still be there. Just white. Um, so let's undo that and that will bring the column headings back. Um, now let's go to our table tools and click on design. We got back to the home tab here for a minute. Click on table tools and design. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit before I do this one. It says total row is an option. There is no total row right now, but if I click on it, uh, there it puts a double line above and it puts the word total down here at the bottom and it adds up um, my ID numbers, which really doesn't make any sense at all. I'm not sure why it doesn't add up credits, but for some reason it's not adding those up. Uh, I don't really want a total row, but sometimes frequently you do, so I'm going to turn that back off. Uh, if I don't want banded rows, I can turn that off, and I still get the blue outlines, but I do not have banded rows. Banded rows usually make it easier to read, I think, so we'll turn that back on. Uh, if I want the first column to look different, uh, click on that, and it makes everything the first column bold. Those are not really column or row headers, so we probably don't want that. If you had row headers over there, you might want to make those look different. Sometimes the last column in a table is supposed to look a little different. Turn that on and everything in the last column here becomes bold. Uh, I'm going to turn that off though. And then let's say sometimes you want banded columns as well. Not very often, but this will make the first, the third, and the fifth columns blue. Since we've also got banded rows, it looks really kind of funny. So let's turn that off. Okay. And one nice thing to notice about tables here is, you know, when I'm at the top of the table in row one, I've got the column headings. But as soon as I scroll, it puts those up into the gray area where my normal column headings are for Excel. So that's a nice feature as well that you don't get if you don't format it as a table. And then the last button here is the filter button. And if I click on that, it takes off those little down arrows here which were meant to do filtering and you can also do sorting. Uh, if you click on a down arrow on one of these uh, you'll see you've got some options to sort and you've got some choices for filtering as well and we'll get into that in another video so I'm going to just cancel out of that. Also uh, if you don't want to do the table thing and you know format as a table and everything with the banded rows and the column headings and the down arrows uh, you can just go to the data tab up here and don't need to answer that. Uh, go to the data tab and you've got in the sort and filter group here you've got uh, sort in ascending order, sort in descending order and you can sort on multiple columns which is what this is for. You see there's two columns here and you can also turn filtering on and off. Right now filtering is turned on which is where these little down arrows come from. If I turn filtering off that goes away and I'm not allowed to filter. Well there are ways to filter but uh, it takes a little more effort. So we'll leave that on 
and this is an Excel table now and we're going to go back to the table tools and design tab here one more time and the last thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to tell it that we want to convert this to a range which means it's just ordinary data and I'm going to do that and when I do um, answer yes to this question if that pops up and when I do uh, it's no longer a table if I scroll down the bottom that little arrow down there in the lower right hand corner is gone uh, if I go up here to the top the little down arrows on the right side of each one of my columns heading is gone and it's an ordinary range now what it also did was it did leave the banding I'm not sure why it does that but it left the banding for me so I'm gonna click to the left of the A here and select everything and then we go to my paint back paint bucket and tell it I want no fill for all of this stuff now when I do that this stuff disappears but it's still there uh, it's just remember that was white on a dark bl uh, blue background and now we've got white text on a white background if I go up here and change my font color to black now I've got my column headings back actually they never went away but now I've got them so I can read them and those are some of the reasons why you might want to make something into an official Excel table uh, as I said a minute ago um, you can go in here and you can sort so I just got them sorted by name uh, you can sort on multiple columns here if you want to just click on add a level and add a level and you can sort on multiple columns and let's cancel out of there and if I click on filter while I'm in the data here click on filter and everything comes up with my down arrows on the right side of the column now and I can do the same filtering I did before I just don't have the nice blue stripes or the dark blue column headings okay so those are the basics of using tables in Excel uh, some sometimes you may want to use them other times you may just want to just skip them and and go directly here to your sort and filter and um, do your sorting and filtering that way.